We're going to start out by identifying cylinders. Now I'm using the free textbook from openstacks.org. And the first surface we'll look at is a cylinder. Now, most people immediately think a hollow pipe or a soda straw or something when they hear the word cylinder, but in math that has a broader meaning. But we will start very simply. In the two-dimensional coordinate plane, x squared plus y squared equals 9 describes a circle centered at the origin with radius 3. Now here is such a circle shown in the xy plane only of the xyz coordinate system. The equation x squared plus y squared equals 9 does not have a z component. So that actually means we have to include all the values of z up and down the z axis. So it's as if we take that circle, x squared plus y squared equals 9, and we pull it up and then we push it down the z axis. This will create a cylinder centered at the origin of radius 3 that runs up and down the z axis. So that brings us to a definition. The set of lines parallel to a given line passing through a given curve is known as a cylindrical surface or a cylinder. The parallel lines are called rulings. So from this definition, we see we still have a cylinder in three-dimensional space, even if the curve is in a circle. Any curve can form a cylinder, and the rulings that compose the cylinder may be parallel to any given line. In this figure, in three-dimensional space, this is the graph of the equation z equals x cubed, and it is a cylinder or a cylindrical surface and the rulings are parallel to the y-axis. Notice we do not have y in the equation z equals x cubed, so the cylinder must run up and down the y-axis. When we sketch a surface, it's very useful to sketch the intersection of the surface with a plane that's parallel to one of the coordinate planes, and these curves are called traces. By definition, the traces of a surface are the cross-sections created when the surface intersects a plane parallel to one of the coordinate planes. Cylindrical surfaces are formed by a set of parallel lines, but not all surfaces in three dimensions are made so easily and simply. So now we're going to move on to more complex surfaces, and the traces are a very important tool when we do this. So by definition, quadric surfaces are the graphs of equations that can be expressed in the form ax squared plus by squared plus cz squared plus dxy plus exz plus fyz plus gx plus hy plus jz plus k equals zero. When a quadric surface intersects a coordinate plane, a coordinate plane is the x plane, the y plane, or the z plane, the trace in two dimensions will be a conic section. An ellipsoid has the equation x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared equals 1. And each of the traces is an ellipse. Of course, if all the denominators are equal, then we have a sphere and not an ellipse. So here we see an ellipsoid in 3D space. It's centered at the origin, the point 0, 0, 0. On the x-axis, it goes from negative 2 to positive 2. On the y-axis, it goes from negative 3 to positive 3. And on the z-axis, it's going to go from negative 1 to positive 1. If we slice through the middle of this ellipsoid with the plane, the xy plane, where z equals 0, we will get the trace. The xy plane is where z equals 0. So we would just plug that into our equation to get our trace in the xy plane. That is what it looks like algebraically. Geometrically, we are slicing through the ellipse with the xy plane. So let's line that up as though we were looking at this directly above from the z-axis. And here's the trace. If we slice through the xy-axis, the yz-axis, or the xz-axis, we'll always get an ellipse. Next, let's consider a hyperboloid of one sheet. Notice this equation is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared, and there's a subtraction in there somewhere. 
minus z squared over c squared equals 1 because the subtraction is in the z squared. This is going to be hyperboloid up and down the z axis. Notice the traces. When z equals 0, we have an ellipse, but as we go up, z equals 1, z equals 2, etc., we still have a successive number of ellipses. But if we were slicing this through the xz plane, let's say y equals 0, we have a hyperbola, and if we were slicing this through the yz plane, x equals 0, we would also have a hyperbola. Now let's consider the hyperboloid of two sheets, and notice in the equation for this surface, two of the variables have negative coefficients and one has a positive coefficient. Z is the positive one now, so our hyperboloid of two sheets will open up and down the Z axis. Notice the traces are still an ellipse or the empty set. There's nothing, for example, at the origin. So at Y equals zero or planes parallel to the Y axis, we have a hyperbola as a trace and at x equals 0 or planes parallel to the x-axis, we also have a hyperbola. The surface does not intersect the coordinate plane perpendicular to the axis. So let's consider this example, x squared over 4 minus y squared divided by 9 minus z squared divided by 12 equals 1. This is a hyperboloid of two sheets. The first thing I want to do is consider the traces. In the xy trace, z equals 0. So that means I have x squared over 4 minus y squared over 9 equals 1, and this is a hyperbola. And here's the graph of the xy trace. The xz trace is very similar, also a hyperbola. In case of the yz case, when I substitute x equals 0, left-hand side I get a negative number equals a positive number. This is not possible. There is no yz trace. Now this confirms to me that this is a hyperboloid of two sheets because there's no yz trace. And the x-axis is the positive. So I think it's going to open up along the x-axis. And there'll be a gap. When I graph this in GeoGebra, I can see it is in fact a hyperboloid of two sheets opening up along the x-axis. So now let's graph this using the isometric graph paper. So I would place my lines in, there's the x-axis, here's the y-axis, and here's the z-axis, and I can make check marks. So here's positive 6 on the x-axis and negative 6, positive 6 on the y-axis and negative 6, positive 6 on the z-axis and negative 6. In the xy trace, where z is 0, so the xy plane, we have a hyperbola that opens up along the x-axis because the x squared term is first, and it will go through the points where x is negative 2, y is 0, and x is positive 2, y is 0. So we know that we have the point plus or minus 2, 0, 0 in the yz trace, and because the xz trace is so similar, we'll get the same point out of that. We know it opens up along the x-axis, and we know it opens up in the yz plane, because they're the two subtractions. So I know the hyperbola is going to go through positive 2, 0, 0, and negative 2, 0, 0. So I'm going to generate a few points using the yz trace, because in all of these, y equals 0. So when I look at this, I've got x squared over 4 minus z squared over 12. I think if I let z equal the square root of 12, then I can solve that equation for x, and I will get x equals plus or minus the square root of 8. So my points are plus or minus the square root of 8, 0, and the square root of 12. So plus or minus approximately 2.83, 0, and about 3.46. And I might notice I can actually just substitute negative square root 12 as well, and I because that wouldn't change it because z squares everything. So actually, I could have plus or minus 2.830 and plus or minus 3.46. That'll actually give me four points on the hyperboloid. There are my four points that I found, and that will help me to graph in 
the isometric graphing paper. And remember, I don't 100% need these points, but when x is 2.83, so it's close to 3 here, y is 0, and z is 3.46, so 1, 2, 3, and a bit. There's a point there. x is 2.83, y is 0, and I go down 1, 2, 3, and a bit. And then I know this one would open up approximately this way. So I'm going to have a hyperboloid that way. And I would do the same thing here. Well, we've certainly seen more beautiful hyperboloids, but you get what they look like. Right? It's a hyperboloid of two sheets. Next, we have the elliptic cone. Almost looks like the same equation as a hyperboloid of two sheets, but this is equal to zero, not equal to one. So there's a negative in it, and we can see the traces are an ellipse. As you go up and down the z-axis here, you can see you will have ellipses there. And if I'm looking parallel to the y-plane, it's a hyperbola. If I'm looking parallel to the x-axis, it's a hyperbola. In the xz-plane, I have a pair of lines that intersect at the origin. And in the yz-plane, I have a pair of lines that intersect at the origin. So the axis of the surface corresponds to the variable with a negative coefficient. So it's going to go open up and down the z-axis. Next we have an elliptic paraboloid, and here we have z equals x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. So one of these variables will not have a square on it, and the axis of the surface corresponds to the linear variable. You can see as we go up the z-plane, it's a series of ellipses, but if we intersect across the x-plane, so if we run a plane through the x-axis parallel to the x-axis, we have a parabola, and the same thing if we do that parallel to the y-axis. The final surface I want to talk about is the hyperbolic paraboloid. So here, z equals x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared, and we can see the traces. In z trace, it's a hyperbola, but in the y and x traces, it's a parabola. The axis of the surface corresponds to the linear variable. The way to get good at understanding these surfaces is to do a lot of problems and to practice drawing them on the isometric paper. In this example, we've got 9x squared minus 18x plus 4y squared plus 16y minus 36z plus 25 equals 0. And we just have to complete the square multiple times here. And you can see that after we've completed the square, we're going to get x minus 1 squared over 4 plus y minus 2 squared over 9 equals z. And we see that this is the equation of an elliptic paraboloid centered at 1, 2, and 0. Practice these a lot. Read your textbook for more examples.